Hi there, Itaro. It is Monday, the 27th of February. So let's take a look at what moved the markets last week. Starting with our zoomed out view of the world, uh, looking at the NASDAQ 100 first, we can see that since early February, the market has been correcting fairly sharply. And it's not just the NASDAQ 100, it is also the S&P 500 now down five-ish percent since the highs of early February. Why has this been happening? Well, we'll take a look at the root causes in a moment, but if we look at the yield on the US 10-year bonds, we can also see that these have been appreciating over that same time frame, uh, now up 12, 12.5%. Looking quickly at China, so China had quite a powerful start to the year, but a lot of the gains have been given back. It's been tracking the rest of the market, and we'll also dig into that a little bit further on in this video. Now for the past two weeks or so, I have been looking a little bit more closely at earnings, particularly earnings of companies that I hold in my eToro portfolio. And quite a number of my companies reported earnings last week. So you can see on screen, uh, these are the dates for last week from the 20th to the 26th. Overstock, Warner Brother Discovery, Mercado Libre, Alibaba, and uh, Square now Block. All reported earnings. Uh, one that's not on this calendar is Rolls-Royce. So all in all, six companies reported earnings in my portfolio, but I'm not going to do a deep dive in this particular video. Running through them very quickly, just to look at the price action, uh, Overstock's earnings were more or less in line with expectations. They did drop a little bit. Warner Brothers Discovery has fared fairly well. Mercado Libre had a pretty blowout earnings from my perspective. So that's been climbing quite nicely. And Rolls-Royce has jumped, I think, 30 to 35% since its earnings report. Uh, the results were that good. They do have a new CEO, but he's not really been there long enough to change anything materially. I think that this is just part of a recovery in uh, this type of business. So there are still a number of recovery plays out there, recovery from the pandemic in this particular context. Looking at the price action for Block, the earnings report was fairly decent. The stock is dropping quite heavily today, as you can see, but it rose quite nicely off the back of its earnings report. Um, and that was because there was news, good news, about their move towards profitability. And Alibaba actually had pretty decent earnings on the day, uh, but it dropped with a broader Chinese market, which once again, I will touch on later. Now, last week in terms of macro data, there was quite a lot going on. It was a holiday in the US on Monday, but you can see, for example, there was lots of CPI data from major economies around the world, PMI data. But the two things that really spooked the markets late last week were the GDP growth number for the US coming in slightly weaker than expected, although still showing some growth. And the core PCE price index coming in quite a lot higher, 50% higher than analysts had expected. This particular piece of data on Friday caused the market to drop pretty significantly uh, as the day progressed. And that's because this is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. So if inflation is no longer dropping, as analysts had expected, then that stokes fears that the Fed is going to continue to be aggressive in their rate hikes. This single data point really scared a market that was already quite nervous. Uh, it looks as though inflation is still falling, but not as quickly as it once was. And there are members in the Fed that are being quite hawkish because of this data. So the fear now is that rates go even higher than previously anticipated. And in addition to this, that the next rate hike could be larger than previously expected. Although the bulk of the members of the Fed so far don't see another 0.5% hike next time around. Personally, this is quite concerning, but in the same way that inflation didn't increase in a straight line, I don't think we can expect it to decrease in a straight line. And considering we've just come out of the Christmas period where people spend a bit more than they do through the rest of the year, and energy prices, at least at the consumer level, have still been quite inflated, I do wonder if this will be an outlier looking back. But given that this collection of data points is what is driving the Fed and the market behavior at the moment, we do need to watch it closely. As a reminder, on screen we have the inflation rate in the US and its decline through the past few months. We can see that it has slowed down very recently. 
And also on screen, I have the Fed funds rate, so the interest rate within the US. It is expected to continue to increase through probably the next few quarters. The size of those increases is up for debate. And it's widely thought that the Fed will only consider bringing rates down once inflation is within its target range and well below the interest rate for a period of time. So I do believe that the price of energy for consumers will drop as the year goes on. I mean, you just have to look at the price of natural gas for various economies. So within the UK, it's dropped from nearly 500 down to 120 in the EU. And in the US, it's dropped by similar amounts. The thing to bear in mind is that the drop in prices is not yet fed through to the consumer. Energy, like any supply chain, passes the prices down the chain as time goes on. So there is a lag between when prices move up or down at the top of the supply chain and when prices go up or down at the bottom, the consumer side of that supply chain. So I did mention earlier that the Chinese stock market, but also the bond market, are having a rough time at the moment, and they have been since late January, early Feb. And there are a few reasons for this, but one key reason as far as bonds are concerned is that the Chinese bond market has seen very large outflows. Because interest rates have risen so aggressively in places like the US, the UK, the EU, that means that investors are getting a higher yield, a higher return on their investments when they put their money into those markets. China, on the other hand, is trying to stimulate economic activity. So they're dropping rates, and that means that yields on Chinese bonds have become less attractive. Of course, there is a large political and risk sentiment element to this, but that is one of the key reasons that the bond market in China is having some trouble at the moment. Last week, we also heard that there might be price wars um, as far as companies like Alibaba, uh, JD.com are concerned and that meant that when Alibaba announced a major earnings beat uh, there was an initial jump but later in the day when this news hit the headlines there was a sell-off for Alibaba and its competitors. The reason for the sell-off here the, the concerns about a price war are that a price war means that these companies will be subsidizing the things that they sell and that'll start squeezing margins and profitability. So they're trying to stoke demand for their products by dropping prices. So in the short term, sure, there might be a knock on margins, but I do think that that is a little bit short-sighted. So if prices are coming down and the Chinese government is trying to stoke activity within the economy, this could end up being a catalyst for demand across the board. And after some time, once the economic activity within China had started to pick up again, I'm sure that prices would start to increase, improving margins once again. What about this week? Well, we are still in earnings season, although we are approaching the end of earnings season. And I've got two companies in my portfolio, eToro portfolio, that'll be reporting. So uh, Coupang will be one of them, and the other one will be Salesforce CRM. So not as much activity as we've seen in recent weeks, but still, no doubt, some interesting insights to be poured over from these two companies. This week, we'll also see a lot of key macro data, so lots of PMI data. And PMIs tend to be leading indicators of economic activity. For those that don't know, when PMIs dip below 50, that's a sign that an economy is likely to experience a slowdown in growth. And as soon as that number starts climbing over 50, that's a sign that that economy is likely to experience growth. As you can see on screen, we will be getting PMI data for, from a lot of interesting economies, but I think that the number that most investors will be watching because they know that the Fed is watching this number uh, will be the initial jobless claims that we will get on Thursday. Remember that the Fed wants the US jobs market to weaken so that one of the stickiest types of inflation, wage inflation, is weakened, and they'll take that as a sign that their plan is working. All right, that's it for this week. Hope you have a good one. Thank you. Goodbye.